So, all right, everybody, we'll go ahead and get started because I want to be sensitive for you guys' time. And also, you guys don't want to hear from me. You want to hear from Orlando. You want to hear from Tasha. You want to hear from Karen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started um, with that. Um, before we get started, I was just going to, um, on behalf of Florida SBDC and FIU, I was just going to thank you guys for participating. Um, this webinar um, focused on the online entrepreneur um, is um, kind of like part of a, a project that we're working on with Prospera um, that's funded by the Miami Foundation and also JP Morgan um, Chase Foundation. And it's part of the Building Prosperity Initiative. So this is focused on creating uh, local jobs in um, the city of Miami and Miami-Dade County and also um, helping small businesses. And so we just really wanna thank our um, sponsors and partners and funders um, for this opportunity. This has been a really great project. Um, we've been able to increase our capacity, especially during COVID-19. And we've also been able to work with some really great folks such as Orlando, Tasha, and Karen um, on these um, webinars to get you guys some really good information to help you grow your business. Um, and so just wanna say shout out to them. Thank you to them for this opportunity. And if um, any of those particular groups can assist you, you know, feel free to reach out. And then just for Florida SBDC and FIU, um, by now you guys are all well familiar with SBDC. We have a team of business specialists under the College of Business at FIU. And we're focused on growing your business, helping you get a loan, get capital, hire more people, um, get a contract, um, increase your revenue. And um, we really love our jobs. So we're basically very happy to um, do that. And then we have a really great job because we get to partner with folks like Orlando and your speakers today to get you guys really good information um, through webinars, trainings, workshops. So with that, I'm not gonna take any more time. I was gonna encourage you guys, um, if you do have anything you wanna put in the chat, please do it. We also want you to ask a lot of questions. Don't be shy. Um, our presenters and our facilitator are not shy, so they want your questions. And um, with that, I'm just gonna turn it over and then please, um, Brianna is going to give you a survey at the end and please take a minute to fill it out because we want to know, you know, how was the content? How was the speakers? Um, you know, was there anything we could have done better? Um, anything like that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Orlando and just thanks for you guys for participating and thanks to our speakers today. Yeah, thank you. And, and thank you, Brian, Brian. And thank you to the um, SBDC and, and um, Prospera and Chase and um, Miami Foundation. Uh, one of the things that we've been talking about as business owners is that uh, as everything continues to shift and change during COVID, uh, what is it that we need to do? What is it that we need to accomplish and, and, and so forth? And as we keep talking about how can we continue to help uh, business owners? How can we continue to provide resources and, and, and good content, good information uh, that's out there that's available uh, at the end of the day? What we want to do is to help you scale and grow your business. And one of the things that a lot of businesses are actually trying to, to figure out is that, listen, I'm a brick and mortar. How do I get myself online? Um, how do I actually become an online entrepreneur? Because there's a lot of online entrepreneurs that they've been selling for years online. And if you are one of those online entrepreneurs that you've been selling online, you know what? Thank you uh, for being with us. If you are a business that you are a brick and mortar and you were trying to figure out how to sell online, this webinar is also for you. Uh, but before we get started into the, um, the essence of what the presentation is all about, I actually want to give our panelists an opportunity to speak. Uh, I've actually, I think this is the fourth, fifth, sixth time that I am sharing, you know, the screen with uh, both uh, Tasha and Karen. And uh, it shall continue, but I want to go ahead, Tasha, for, so you can go ahead and share um, about yourself, company, and so forth. Perfect. Hi, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I'm Tasha Cunningham. I'm a managing partner at uh, The Brand Advocates. We are a full service advertising uh, marketing uh, agency, and we specialize a lot in uh, public sector, um, you know, working with municipalities and governments and things like that. We also do a lot of websites and a lot of web content. So I'm very excited to uh, share our information with you today. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tasha. Karen. Hi, I'm Karen Vieira. I'm owner of the Med Writers. We are similar to Tasha, a writing company. We're not a full 
marketing agency because we don't do media buys and certain other things but we do get involved with a lot of building of websites content writing um tons of social media content tons of website content all kinds of downloadable content like white papers and so on um we've been in business 13 years we've seen a lot we've done a lot um i'm a bit of a serial entrepreneur this is not my first business and um, i have a lot of insight to share about being an online entrepreneur i started my online entrepreneur um career i guess you would say many many years ago um you know when i was in graduate school in my early 20s i had a lot of different online businesses i dabbled in a lot of things some didn't work and some did <laughs> and some i still do and, and some i have left behind so i have so much to share this is a packed um seminar as it always is we always have so much to tell you we love to tailor our information to you so if you can just put in the chat what your business is or what what area you're looking at moving into when we're talking about online entrepreneurship, then we could possibly tailor some of our examples and some of the things we're saying to some of your businesses. So please don't be shy. We're not shy. Um, super excited to help you today. All right. And, and thank you. And, and, and I'm a little shy, uh, but uh, <laughs> um, Orlando Spinoza with uh, m and Media. Um, we actually uh, focus on designing, developing, and implementing outreach programs to help municipalities, government agencies, and organizations effectively market their brand. So everything that we do is educational in helping the small businesses scale and grow. And um, before we get started, uh, one of the things that I want to ask you and for you to ask yourself, you know, are you, are you ready to start selling? You know, um, how are you currently marketing your business? Have you always sold online? Have you shifted to selling online? Where are you selling your products and services? Do your customers know where to buy your products and services? And one of the things that we always talk about whenever we do a lot of these webinars is shifting your mindset. What happens to a lot of small businesses and just businesses in general is how do I scale? How do I go to the next level? But why do I need to change? How do I modify when I've been doing it like this forever and ever and ever? And um, one of the key things that we like to do um, to uh, Karen's point is um, start writing um, online what you do, your business. Let us know what, what it is that you're doing, what it is that you're selling, product, service, what have you. Uh, let, uh, let us know. Um, I know that Tasha um, looks at the comments, responds, so does Karen. Um, our goal is to make sure that we answer your questions. And uh, a lot of you have actually heard me say this before, being an entrepreneur is a lonely journey. But the main focus is that there's so many of us out there, you know, according to the SBA, there's over 30 million, you know, entrepreneurs, and we are actually the ones that saturate the economy by way of creating jobs and creating opportunities. So one of the main things is that we want to make sure that we assist and help you any way that we possibly can. So why is it extremely important to sell online? Right now with the shutdown, with the pandemic, everyone is buying online. Uh, I was laughing because I was actually on a previous Zoom call and I was looking out the window, my kitchen, and I saw, you know, one right after another. I saw FedEx, I saw Amazon, and I saw UPS. And then, you know, maybe five, six minutes later, I saw the, uh, um, you, the actual post office, uh, you know, driver pass by my house. People are actually buying online. The one thing that you cannot do is that you can't come in and think, well, maybe people aren't going to buy my products. People aren't going to buy my services. The overall goal of what we want to do today is to actually assist and help you to think differently, to see how you can adapt, uh, where you can actually see how your, your sales not only survives, but they thrive. Um, and a lot of stores, what they're actually offering. For the sake of those that like to leave and want to leave their house, a lot of people are actually going to stores and picking up. A lot of people are actually going to um, restaurants and picking up orders. I mean, not everything has to be delivered, but the main thing is that we want you to start processing in your mind, what is it that you can do and how can you actually start adapting? Because right now, listen, where we are at right now, nothing is gonna shift and change. This is going to be a lot of the new norm because people have gotten accustomed to 
being at home. People have gotten accustomed to, yes, they will go out. Yes, they will shop. Yes, they will do certain things. But the overall goal is that you need to be selling online if you're not selling. Karen. Yeah. So what we saw during the shutdown with the pandemic was really interesting to me because I'm the kind of person, my background, I didn't mention, I have a PhD in biomedical sciences. So I'm a researcher by nature. That's me. So I'm the scientist who likes to observe and analyze. And it was really interesting to see how everything just shifted to the point where people weren't willing to go out even to pick up food from a restaurant. And you saw, you know, delivery services and whatever popping up that weren't there before new industries, you know, came into existence that really didn't exist before because nobody was selling masks and hand sanitizer and, you know, all this PPE in, in mass numbers. So there's so many things that have happened that have propelled us forward. And what I've seen, some of the best thinkers in the industry have said that we have been moved ahead a good eight to 10 years um, technologically because of this pandemic. So, I don't think there's anybody that doesn't know what Zoom is anymore. But a year ago, if you asked your mom, or depending how old you are, your grandma, <laughs> who, you know, what's Zoom? They'd be like, Zoom? Zoom sounds like you're driving too fast. Slow down. Um, so we got to embrace this. We got to look at this like, yay. Because if we just focus on, you know, everything went to hell in a handbasket, then we don't focus on the solutions. So what I've been really excited about with this shutdown is people that weren't selling online have figured out how to sell online and everything. I'm not just talking, you know, Amazon. Amazon's great. And we're going to talk a lot about Amazon as we get into it, but we're going to talk about so many other channels. And some of you have seen posts in the chat have consulting businesses, have businesses that are in the service industry, not a product. And I'm in the service industry. Tasha's in the service industry. Orlando's in the service industry. So we get it. And we will share all of our insights. But I just want you to realize that, you know, both products and services have had to shift and adapt. A lot of people I know that had a brick and mortar office that they're used to their clients coming in to buy services that that isn't a thing anymore. And it's okay that that isn't a thing because we can adapt and we can figure out how do we create an online presence that allows people to feel like they came in and they signed up and they are working with you. And that's what we're here to help you through today. So, I mean, we will have a lot of information targeted about selling products online because that's easy, but please adapt. Um, because there's the same places that are selling products are also selling services and um, any of the websites you can go to to buy products you can also almost all of them also buy services from so you've got to be kind of forward thinking so just put your thinking cap on we're going to go fast but I'm just so super excited as we get into this information yeah. and thank you Karen um, Tasha I just agree with everything that um, Karen said. You know, a lot of times if you're if you don't have a product and you're in professional services, people say, okay, well, how can you possibly sell online? You don't have an actual product. What you're really selling is your business, your skills, and your website. Although you're not selling a, a product directly from your site, your product is yourself and your company. So your website needs to have, like Karen said, the the experience of okay, I came in, I met with them, this is, you know, and they, and then basically having that presence, who's ever buying from you gets comfortable and feel safe to do business with you, whether you have a product or not. So I know that, um, you know, there's some people online who are, who are here in the webinar now that don't necessarily have a product to sell, but more of a, prof a professional service. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, um, in later slides, but I agree that this is, is kind of an exciting time too, um, to Karen's point in that now we all have to shift to what is our online presence. Let's look at our online presence. A lot of times if you've had a professional services firm, you're not really looking at your website because it's just there for informational purposes. Now everything is shifted and changed. And like Orlando was saying in the other slide, we have to shift our mindset. So I'm very excited to help you guys do that today. Yeah, and thank you. And I think that that's one of the, the main things that we keep talking about. Um, the internet was made for business. Uh, and right now, where I think a lot of times people have actually uh, are struggling with this is that um, 
people forget that they are the brand. You as an individual are the brand. You're the voice of your business. Whether you have a product or a service, when it comes to a product, you can come in and show nice pictures of the products. You can show nice pictures of, of what it does, um, how to sell. But this is an opportunity for those of you that are business owners to come in and be known as a business owner. You are the brand. When we talk about Apple, people know Steve Jobs. When you talk about Facebook, people know uh, Mark Zuckerberg. You know what? And we can keep naming more and more companies out there that at the point became, you know what, the people that ran the companies. Uh, we're known. Well, this is an opportunity for you as a business owner to use an online presence, uh, whether it's to come in and actually speak directly to your clients, your customers. You know what? Because at the end of the day, the infrastructures and the customers are there. We are spending more and more time online and we will continue. People are going to continue buying online. People are going to actually come in and, and, and uh, create things. I've the person that I was, I was in a store, you know what, uh, when I was actually visiting my family in, in Tennessee and my sister wanted a specific uh, coffee maker and I found it and I said, let me check to see if it's cheaper online. Found it cheaper online. It was a Saturday um, and I'm like, I'm leaving Monday. It's going to be a nice surprise for her to have it on Monday. And I did. I ordered it because a lot of times what's happening is, is that we already have access and we have choices. What you have to uh, identify is how quickly do you want something? Can you wait for it? Can you not uh, wait for it, whether a product or service? And right now there is a built-in audience that are online. If I were to ask people, what is it that you do when you wake up in the morning? A lot of people go directly towards the phone. Uh, for me, I go directly to make coffee, but um, there is a global audience out there. What you, we need to do is help you figure out how do you actually scale and grow your business by using the internet? And we're still going to use the same thing when you unmute. So Karen unmuted herself, uh, Tasha first. So Karen. Oh, um, I was just going to jump in real quick and say with this slide, you know, what we mean by the infrastructure and the customers are there. Um, people are looking online for everything. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter if you're selling, like we said, services or products, and it doesn't matter what your product is. If you're selling, you know, a one cent product, paper clip, versus if you're selling, you know, a million dollar product, a, a house or a building, people are looking for it. And whatever it is, whether you're selling candles, soap, food, you know, whatever, whatever services you're in, HR, you're in, you know, tax, you're in insurance, you're in whatever, somebody's looking for it online. And there's all these channels for them to look already. So if somebody were to tell you to go online and order a book, you would just go to Amazon, you wouldn't really think about anywhere else, unless you're like me, you're cheap, and you just go to your local library website first. <laughs> um, that's because I don't like killing trees. Um, but I'm crazy like that. I'm, a, I'm an undercover tree hugger. Um, <laughs> but, you know, so it's like, this is automatic. People are already doing it. So how do you shift and get in front of where the most people are? So that's the mindset that I want you to have. You have to define your tribe. Who are the people that are going to buy from me? And you have to know who they are. Um, and, and when I teach classes specifically on this, I try to get people to really drill down like know your client, know who they are, know the kind of person they are, know the kind of expectations they have, know the websites that they would be looking on. And that way you can figure out where they're hanging out online and then you can just miraculously be there. For B2B, you know, if you're a business selling to a business, so for example, Adiola says, you know, HR advisory and consulting, you're selling to a business you know that business owners, business executives, business professionals hang out on LinkedIn. So this is what we mean by the internet was made for business. The people already have containers that they're, they're hanging out in. They're on Facebook, they're on LinkedIn, they're buying on Amazon, they're buying on eBay, they're searching Google. Make sure that you show up in their searches or make sure you go where they are and reach out to them. Do not reinvent the wheel. There's absolutely no need to do that when there's so much out there. And if you have the kind of product or service that can be sold globally, 
do it. This is the time because I'm hearing a lot of people saying, you know, my revenue has dropped. My sales have dropped because of the pandemic. So go global. If you were only selling local, let's say you're in Miami and you were selling, you know, brick and mortar, a store or, you know, an office where people came in, who else could you offer to? Would people in Broward need your service or your product? Um, you know, maybe shipping costs are not prohibitively high for what you sell if it's a product. Can you ship globally? And you need to know those numbers. So do your research, figure out what shipping costs would look like. Does it make sense to target globally? Because you can jump on eBay and you can list the product and you can say willing to ship globally. You can do the same thing on Amazon. So these are options with products and with services. If it's a service you can offer from anywhere to anywhere, please do it. My clients are around the globe and they have been for 13 years that I've been doing this business. I don't think that there's ever been a time that I don't have any global clients. I've had clients in almost every continent except Antarctica. I mean, people must live there, but I haven't sold to them. Not so, yet. <laughs> yet. See, I, this is why me and Orlando are friends, because he's a hustler too. <laughs> But yeah, so the internet was made for business. Think, do your research, figure out, think outside the box. Don't limit yourself to only what you know or only what you've done before. Think outside the box. Where can you go with this? Yeah, and thank you. And I think that one of the key things is making sure that you understand, listen, you as a client and a customer are buying online. So a lot of your own customers and your target markets doing the exact same thing, Tasha. All right. Um, what I would say on this slide too, um, to the point of not reinventing the wheel, definitely don't do that because we have, there's a tons of, um, you know, platforms that are, give you all the tools you need to sell online. But I wanted to also just mention the tie between your website and social media. So if you are selling a product online, you need to be looking beyond um, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. There are new social media networks that are popping up all over the place. There's one called MeWe, M-E-W-E. -E, that's the Facebook alternative that's got privacy um, features built into it. Take a look and it's got over 4.8 million people um, are on that platform as we speak right now. So you need to go outside your the comfort zone of the social media networks that you know about because you can use these other social networks where you might, you might get fresh eyes, fresh customers. They've never see, heard your product. They've never seen your website. And this is a great place for you to connect with them. And if you're selling a product online, you can always present your website to them. And now you have this new audience of buyers that you didn't have. Um, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So I would say just look outside of what you normally would do and look for the new and emerging technologies and platforms that you can take advantage of now. Yeah, and one thing that you can't be is you can't be afraid of trying something different, something new. Um, at the end of the day, the interactions with customers, customers will tell you what they want and what they need. It's that response that people are actually looking for. Um, and I do believe that if you are looking at, um, uh, one of the things that I sat back and I started talking to a lot of the small businesses was, you know, what is your online presence look like? Your online presence can't be an afterthought. It's the same thing where a lot of people come in front of Zoom or in front of any of the other platforms. And right now people are fixing themselves, getting their hair done, you know what, uh, makeup, all the other stuff that they do. Well, you know what, that interaction right now, that online presence, the same thing for you to come in and put your best foot forward. I've actually, I've contacted people where they actually, I sent them an email. I don't hear from them in, uh, I'll give you two days, I'll give you three days, but it's a week, two weeks, three weeks. That means that you're not really interested in my business. So this is an opportunity for you to actually be responsive because what happens with a lot of the major companies, larger companies, they're actually hiring people to respond. So there are platforms where you can actually message and communicate. Um, you know what, they've got, um, you know, chat box that you can actually respond because in essence, what you're doing is that you're building your business by way of interacting with your customers. What Facebook has done is given people control over 
building a relationship with a brand. If they love you, they're going to talk highly of you. They're going to actually tell your friends, you know what, how many of you, when you used to go to a movie, you would tell your friends, go see that movie. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do. So I believe that right now, when it comes to reviews, when it comes to uh, communicating, there are opportunities out there. The one thing that you don't want to do is that you don't want to have an online presence and remain silent. You want to be able to talk. You may want to be able to communicate. You want to be personable, approachable, and nice. That's why um, a lot of times I used to tell my former students when they had their resumes, before they would go and do an interview, I said, we need to beef up your resume because you interview extremely well. It's what a lot of you do. Talk to, have a Q&A, answer questions, and get in front of a camera and start talking. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid because your customers definitely want to talk to you. And if having a conversation with you means that you gain a sale, then start talking. Tasha. Um, I agree with you, everything you just said, but going on to the responsiveness of the business, um, you know, the one thing that, and we manage a lot of online reviews and things for um, our other clients, the one thing that you're going to need to make sure that you do is get that Google My Business page. Yahoo has one. All the major search engines have one. Increasingly, what you're going to find is customers are not necessarily going on social media to, um, you know, talk about brands. They'll go and put a listing or a review right on your Google My Business page or your Yahoo Business page and or Yelp, you need to be on all of those platforms. So it's not just Google My Business, you have to do that with all the other search engine platforms. And then also with Yelp and some of the other ones that are out there. And there's some emerging ones that have just started. Um, there's one rate my review or something like that, that I that I just it went across my desk and I was like, oh, here's another review platform. So there are tons of new emerging review platforms that we may, as we're sitting here right now, we've, we've never heard of them. But if you do a Google search, you'll see that people are leaving reviews there. And so you need to be having a presence at least on all the major ones for the search engines but definitely on the more niche ones as well because there's you know there's review sites specifically for lawyers um you know so depending on what your business is there may be a review site that's specific to that and so you would need to have a presence there as well and then responding, um, you know, what we do for our clients is when someone leaves a review online for them, we are required um, contractually to respond within one hour. Um, if you can do it in less time, that's great. But definitely if you can respond within the hour, that's awesome because that shows real responsiveness. Don't leave the review dormant for days and days and days because usually people just get upset that you're not responding and then they keep posting stuff. So it's better to just address it right away and always try to assist, always offer to assist. That's one of the main things because if a lot of these sites, you can't remove a negative review, but what you can do is respond to it and show that you are assisting um, and offering to help to correct the situation. And Tasha, if I wanted to claim uh, my uh, Google My Business, how would I go about doing that? You're, you're... I actually just put a link in the chat. I don't know who I, I just need to unmute myself. I okay. So names. yeah. So but yeah, there. All it goes through your Google account, and then you're able to. Um, at that point, uh, you know, build out your listing, you can add pictures, you can do, you know, you have to put your hours that you operate, all kinds of things that you can put in there and you can basically build a really nice page. And so, you know, if you have a really good page and all of your information is there, people are gonna start leaving the reviews and then just make sure that you respond as soon as you possibly can. I, I cannot tell you how many of our clients will leave the, you know, in the past before we've taken control of their online reputation, they will have left, you know, a, something sitting for like a week. And so, you know, the more you leave it sitting for a week, remember when someone Googles your business, Googles your industry, and you come up in Google searches, they're going to see that review. And if they go to your Google My Business page, they're gonna see that review and then they're gonna say, hey, Look at someone was upset about a product or service and this company didn't respond and it's been a week or it's been a month. That doesn't look good on your business. But if they can see that you responded right away, that makes you look responsive and that you're offering to take care of, you know, whatever the situation is and make make good on it. And thank you. And, and Karen, I saw the, the link that you shared and I actually put it in the chat. 
um, as okay, well. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, so I'll, I'll touch on Google My Business briefly and I'll touch on some other things that are on here too. So Google My Business, I'll walk you through it. The link is in the chat, just go there and sign up. All you need is a Google account. So if you have a Gmail account, you already have a Google account and you just create your business. And what I mean by that is you're going to put in the name of your business, the address of your business, what you sell, what services you offer, like Tasha said, the hours you're open, you wanna put as much detail as possible. If you have a store, you want pictures, you want people to be able to find you, so you want pictures of the outside, what it looks like from coming way down the street so people can see you, you know, for restaurants, et cetera, you wanna make sure that you have Google My Business because when people, what Google My Business is, if you've ever opened your phone or your computer and typed in, I don't know, restaurants near me, Chinese food near me. Uh, I don't know, pick something. Nearest mall to me. Something. Nearest doctor, doctor near me. Hello, when you're sick, you know, urgent care near me. Um, that's what Google My Business does. Those listings that you got, those people are in Google My Business. They created an account for their business. Um, so if you don't have one, you're at a real disadvantage because when people are doing searches for what's near them, you don't show up. Now, my business is not a brick and mortar business. It never has been. I haven't been affected by the pandemic in that way because we have always been virtual, 13 years of being virtual. My goal was that I could work while I'm sitting on the beach if I want to. And I've made that my lifestyle, beach bum lifestyle to the end, salt life, not even embarrassed. But if your business is like mine, you might say, I don't need to Google my business because nobody's coming to my house. I'm not giving them my address, right? That's how I used to think. I didn't have a Google my business for years. I was like, man, these people ain't coming to my house. But let me tell you something. It's a really nice place to get reviews. It's a really nice place when people type something into Google. You don't have to just be catering to the local market. My Google My Business for my business is set to the maximum radius that you can set it to. It says, you know, you cater to customers within what radius and it's X number of miles. I have mine set to whatever was the maximum that Google allowed me to type in. It might be like 999. <laughs> so anybody within 999 miles or whatever the number was that they maxed me out at, they type in medical writing I show up and guess what I have on there? Good reviews. <laughs> when our clients are really happy, we instantly send them the link to go leave a review on Google. And guess what? Even when I bid on federal projects, guess what I put in my proposal? If they allow URLs in the proposal, here's a link to my Google My Business page so you can read my reviews. Why do you want to Google my business page? Because you can use it for so many things. It's just, it's your presence on Google and everyone is searching in Google for everything. So you absolutely have to have one. And what, you know, talking about that, that's one of the ways that people can contact you. So when you sign up there, it allows you to have like a messaging type function where people can send a message to the business. Let's say they pick up their phone and they search for whatever product or service you offer. Um, then they find you, they could send a message and say, hey, are you available to help me today or whatever? And that, if you have the Google My Business app on your phone, the same way if you have Facebook Messenger and somebody sends you a message in Facebook, it pops up on your phone, like the same way a text message would instantly. It pops up on your phone instantly. And then you can just reply. It's like texting with your customers. Why would you not want to allow your customers to text you? Like you want to be in contact with people. You want sales. You want engagement. You want interaction with them. So this is a super good thing. And as soon as you get those emails, those calls, those messages, you need to reply. So if you need to make a different alert sound, for this is the sound of my work phone number ringing, like this is a different ringtone, this is the sound of my Google My Business alert, it's a different tone than my text message or whatever alert. Do that because these things are important. This is the difference between a good business 
and a business is going out of business. <laughs> yeah, and someone so, just asked for the um, the link to Yahoo yeah. My Business, and I just put it in the chat. Okay, awesome. So it's in yeah. There. So you know, Katiana said, but how do I prevent people from coming to my house? I mean, here's the thing: if you're the kind of person that you are private and you really don't want to put your home address on there, though, if you have it registered with Sumbiz as your home address, anybody can get it anytime they type in your business name, anyways. But you know, short of living in a gated community, um, what you really can do is just put on there, you know, uh, available by appointment only, no physical location, virtual business. There's a lot of buzzwords you can use to indicate like, please don't show up at my house, right? Without saying that. And then the other thing that I've done with my business is I have a virtual location that I use as my business address and I pay a fee for that. Um, and I'm happy to pay a fee and I have an address and I, you know, it's address, whatever, and I'm suite number, whatever. And I get all my mail to that. And I actually use my Google, my business to that address rather than my house address. Though before I had it with my house address, before I had that virtual address. So it's up to you. Do you have the budget for it? My virtual address is not expensive. It's, I don't know. I don't know what I spend on it. Maybe $200 or, or less a year um, because it's the equivalent of a mailbox. But you know, depending on the address you want and whatever, it can be more expensive. So you've got to see, does that fit in your budget? But you certainly want to do this. This is very important. And whenever you have interactions with people, you want to make sure that you are being super nice. Here's what I mean, because a lot of us are used to in-person conversations, in-person um you know, there's, there's dialogue, but there's body language and people can, can understand you. And, you know, we're in South Florida, so everybody's like really Hispanic and there's a lot of body language that goes with that, right? We talk with our hands and our eyebrows. So when you're moving online, that's a whole adjustment. You can't talk to people, just send them quick message like it's a text. Yeah, we're open. That sounds really rude. It's, Hi, thanks for contacting us. So excited that you want to shop with us. Yes, we'll be open at 9 a.m. Smiley face, because they can't see that you're smiling. <laughs> so, you know, be super approachable and nice when you're dealing with things online. I'll tell you, I have interactions with certain professionals, and I'm talking professionals with degrees and titles, that they have zero etiquette. Or like emails and, and so on. And they just, whatever they think, hey, send me the document. I need it now. And I'm like, who are you talking to, boss? <laughs> I don't like that. I don't like when people, you know, because I'm going to be like, hey, how are you, Orlando? Hope you're doing good. Well, actually, Orlando and I are beyond that. But maybe Tasha. Hey, Tasha, hope you're doing well. Can you send me that document, please? I really appreciate it. Thanks. Smiley face. And then I can get the how, how you're doing, doing well. You can just type it right. in. Right, <laughs> something, something. So just make sure that you realize that it's different than sending a text message to your friends because your customers or potential customers may not really understand that you're just sending a quick message and that you're not angry at them. They're like, I don't want to do, do business with them. They're not nice. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times I choose not to do business with businesses that are not nice. And it's not because they're not nice people. It's because I get these rude emails. Hey, send the documents, the thing is due. I'm like, oh wait, I'm spending my money somewhere else. <laughs> and make sure, make sure that you're not doing this in all caps because people feel as though you're yelling to them. And I think that that's, what, listen, this is the best time right now for you to build that rapport and to come in and interact and be kind and be gracious and, and keep building on that. The, the overall goal is that there's existing channels right now that you can actually take advantage of your website. So uh, one of the questions was asked, what makes me different or how can I differentiate myself from others? Be yourself. The one thing that each and every one of you has that's different is yourself. Add your personality, be kind, 
answer questions, use the platforms that are there, your SEO tags and, and, and the content and so forth. But there's a lot of websites um, and platforms right now we wanted you to start looking at where you can actually sell your products, sell your services, whether Amazon. And we always talk about Amazon because it's like Amazon is is Amazon. But I know people that are making a very nice living on eBay and on Craigslist and Etsy and Walmart that's buying uh, Sears. Kmart is actually allowing people to sell. Uh, Newegg, eCreator, Bonanza, eBid. You can sell on Facebook. You can sell on LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram. And, and there are platforms. Uh, sometimes I sit back and, and I'm talking to, to some clients and they're like, well, I want to build a state-of-the-art website and I want to add my own, you know, merchant, you know, what services to collect my own credit card and collect this and collect that. Listen, if I go to pay somewhere and I see the PayPal logo, it's already built trust for me to come in and be able to pay to say, listen, you know what? Why do you want to reinvent the wheel? At some point as a business owner, you have to let go. You don't have control over everything. What you do have control is how you communicate your brand to your business, um, to your customers. And when all is said and done, we have options. Um, I know people that have actually built a very successful online business uh, using Square. They're allowing Square to um, actually assist and help them. What you don't want to do is, and we keep saying, don't reinvent the wheel. I know that some of us struggle with the, well, which one should I use? You know what? Decide, you know, when you go out and you decide what is going to do, you're going to work with, test the waters and see uh, you have choices. You can definitely click and shift and change. The one thing that a lot of people don't spend a lot of money in doing is doing the research is finding out is your website ready to start selling online? And if it is, go for it. If it's not, figure out what's the best way to actually connect your website to some of these platforms and start selling. I encourage you, why? Because people are buying. People sit back and say, pandemic. People are still spending a lot of money. You just wanna make sure that they're spending that money buying what it is that you have to sell. Um, Tasha. Um, one, one platform that I wanted to add here was Shopify. I know a lot of people um, probably already have heard of Shopify, but what's great about them, and it's a little bit different from some of these other platforms that are here, um, is they give you such a great suite of tools to do your own marketing online. They give you free Google ad credits. There's all kinds of things that they put in for new, you know, Shopify customers. So I would definitely take a look at that. Um, and it's very secure as well. They've got great security protocols. Um, so I would, for that, for this particular slide, I would add Shopify to that. I didn't include it in that. We'll add it. Thank you. I think we have it on the next slide, actually. I think I remember <laughs> which slide I put it on. Yeah, it's a really great tool. Maybe it's hidden behind the image. <laughs> yeah, no, it could Thank be, you. but I don't think so. I think it's on the next one, because I think the next slide is where we talk about building your own website and your own brand versus utilizing the existing channels. But, you know, I really just want to piggyback on everything that everybody just said. This list that we have here, this is a short list. Like, cause look how much space we have on this slide. So yeah, Brianna is going to send the slide after the, the PowerPoint. Yeah, definitely hit this up. Whether you're selling products or services, Amazon now has services. Craigslist, you can sell services on, not just products. You can list your services on a lot of places. Maybe you can't list it on eBay and Walmart and Sears and whatever, unless your products there, but you can advertise on Facebook. You can advertise in LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best place. If you're selling services, um, I think it said 27% of Americans are on LinkedIn. And it said most corporations think, like their executives think that LinkedIn is a place that they should be on. So this tells you that if you're selling to businesses and you're selling to professionals, you need to be on LinkedIn. So this isn't just a list for uh, products. This is services and products. This is across the board. Now, if you have a very specific service, there's other websites that we didn't list on here. We didn't talk about Upwork. Upwork used to be Elance, in case those of you are my age know what Elance is. Um, there's Upwork, there's Guru, there's Freelancer. You know, there's a whole list. So if you go in and you type 
um, you know, freelance websites where you can post your services. Let's say you're an accountant, you're HR consultant. You can post your services and people as they have a need can buy directly from you on these freelance websites. So this list is not an exhaustive list. This list is just to get you thinking. There's so many places where people are already searching. Go there, get found. So when I started my business, did I build a website? Yes, of course. Did my website get traffic? No, of course not. It was brand new. So what did I do? I listed myself on Elance. I listed myself on Guru. You know, scientists, ex, you know, senior scientists at Kraft Foods. I've done XYZ. I used to do gene therapy research. I, I worked in XYZ hospital. I had all these credentials. I put myself on there looking really damn good and made myself available for work. And where do I still get the majority of my leads from? All of those freelance websites still, I get probably more than I do from my website, which by the way, my website recently got ranked as the number 12 medical writing influencer globally. So my website's getting traffic, go me. Um, just had to give a shout out to myself. Um, <laughs> But so my website's getting traffic, but yeah, I get more traffic from Upwork because guess how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars they spend to make sure they're at the top of the Google searches when you're searching for looking for a medical writer with a PhD, I'm going to show up via Upwork <laughs> before I'm going to show up via my own organic work that I've done on my website. Why? because they paid to be on top of where I'm listed. <laughs> I'm in the organic searches, the ad searches are above me. So utilize these websites because Amazon, Craigslist, you know, Facebook, these things are gonna show up long before your website ever can. So don't think that your website's the end all be all. Use the existing channels and then your website's an add on. When they find you in these other places, now they can go to your website and see more details. But don't expect that you're, you're gonna build a website and people just come. This is not how this works. And people are confused. So you have to have yep. ways for people to get to your website, to find you. And these are the channels. So use them, please. There are so many more than these. These are just to get you started thinking about it. Yeah. And keep in mind, one of the things that, that Angela, you know what, when, when you start calculating a lot of this is what works best for you. There's not a one size fits all. There are so many things out there that you can actually use. The overall goal is creating and looking at what's out there right now, what it is that you do within your website. Um, so the overall goal, when you sit back and you think about your website is actually a web store. So a lot of people say, well, I don't want to go and sell on Amazon because Amazon takes X amount of money um, from my percentage of what I'm going to make. Well, I don't want to sell on this way. At the end of the day, it's about making money. At the end of the day, it's visibility. When it comes to the reality of if people come in and they don't know you, they're not going to buy from you. So there are platforms out there that you can actually take advantage of. What you cannot do is sit idle. Now, with everything that we've been sharing and what we've talked about, one of the main things that we keep saying is you have to create a game plan for yourself. What works for Tasha may not work for Karen, may not work for Orlando, because there are different things that we do, but there may be similarities. And then you can ask for opinions. Well, Tasha, you were talking about, you know, what Shopify, you know, um, do you think that I could actually be on Shopify? Do you think that I could actually go to WooCommerce? You can ask for the aspect of, but a lot of times you can also go in and test the waters and see, I like this better than that. I like that. But what you want to do is definitely use your website so that you can get yourself known so you can build a brand. So then eventually when people know who you are and what you offer and bring to the table, they will come directly to you. Um, I have a client that they actually sell a specific product and they sell on, on, on uh, eBay. And people have actually started buying the product. They've got the relationship. And now they're coming to them directly to buy their products. Because sometimes the reason why we don't buy from you directly is guess what? We don't know you. So 
using these platforms will actually give you an opportunity to be known. And the moment that you start building that customer relationship, you start building that relationship, we get to know you and we buy directly from you. So those are the things that you have to look at. So uh, oh, Tasha, you unmuted, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, um, Angela just asked um, in the chat, how do you coordinate your social media with your website and just basically you know, coordinate all of your um, communication? So I uh, typed in a quick answer and I just wanted to um, say it here so that everyone could hear it. Um, there are tools that help you do that coordination. Uh, one of them is um, Hootsuite, another one is Sprout Social. There's another um, new one that's out called uh, Social Pinpoint, and that will allow you to take all of your social media um, and integrate everything with your communications, your posts, all of that. And then for your website, um, I definitely recommend Google Analytics because that's gonna tell you everything that's happening on your website, who's clicking where, the, num the amount of time that they're spending on the site, and it's very easy to integrate um, Google Analytics into uh, your overall communications. I'm actually going to just look up the link really quickly and, and put it into the chat so that you can establish your own um, Google Analytics account. All right. Yeah, listen, thank you. And, and I'm looking at the time and we've got uh, about two two slides uh, to go, three slides. Uh, I want to be mindful of it. So if you have to, you know what, step away at one o'clock. This is being recorded um, and it will be uh, up on the um, SBDC, uh, you know what, uh, Webs uh, I just want to say YouTube. one thing, Orlando, yeah, before you jump off this slide, because I feel like there's something really important on here that I don't want people to miss. I want people to realize I'm not telling you, based on the last slide, not to build your website. I'm telling you to get on those other places to send traffic to your website. So if you don't have a website now, that's fine. But at some point, build one and plan to get traffic to it. Now, that's just step one. Step two is you want your website eventually to show up in searches. So you want to put content and content is king and people get stuck on this idea that content has to be difficult. Content could be super simple. Somebody sent a message in the chat, for example, explaining the type of business she had and said, I sell jewelry imported from women artisans all over the world. And instantly I was intrigued. So if you have a website, it needs to go into that story. You're supporting women. Hell yeah. Would I support your business? Hell yeah. Can I find you right now when I type in women artisans? Probably not. But if I went on Etsy, maybe you're selling on there. Maybe you're selling on eBay. Maybe you're selling on Amazon. And eventually, like Orlando said, if you have good content and your products are going to buy from you, I'm going to start coming to your website. Now, enough people come to your website, you start posting good content. Maybe you can post videos from some of these women around the world that are making the products. You know, the content is then what drives people to keep coming back and eventually gets you listed in the searches. So yeah, Amazon and eBay and Etsy and all those are always gonna come up first because they pay for that position, but you wanna come up eventually, even if you're on the second page right on the third page how many people couldn't find what they were looking for and they do go to the second and the third page right it's okay to be on there and that content is what's going to get you on there so please don't ever look over the fact that you need content for your website not just the product descriptions of the products or services you're selling but content and you can have anything just sit record a quick video you talking in your phone post it anything is content. You find something cool and interesting, you think your customers would like, that's content, post it. Don't overthink it. Content is easy. If you really think about it, you find something to post on Facebook every day. If you try, right? Or IG, I know y'all do, don't lie to me. I yes, see y'all out there. And TikToks, you know, one of the things that, that I can actually uh, sit back and say within the simplification of this, a lot of people's websites, it's full of cobwebs. And when I say it's cobwebs is that it's dusty because nothing's on it. Something simple, like you look at the bottom and it says copywritten 2015, 16, 17. We are in 2020. 2007. And you, exactly. Listen, and when you look at that, you say, wait a second, 
Are they still in business? How are people going to buy from you online if they don't know that you exist? And this is where you need to combine those efforts of offline and online efforts. Make your brand consistent. Yes, we have an online store. Yes, you can come in and buy from us. And if you look at the image that, that I actually found online, imagine that. Imagine if my experience going to your store now you're giving me a virtual experience. I know people right now, and some of you have heard Daniel with um, Creative Particle. He's actually talked about the aspect of what he's doing with these clients. He's actually created video so that when clients come in, you know what, to the actual website, it's as if they're actually walking into the store and they're having their questions answered and they are so comfortable right now that they can make a purchase because in the past, when we were fearful, if we were gonna be able to buy and get the package and people were hesitant to put their credit card, that doesn't exist anymore because what's happening right now is that this has become the new norm, you know, to, to the point, you know, that, that Tasha and Karen have talked about, you know what, I, I think that right now, having a, a, an online presence is going to be to your, in, um, to your actual uh, growth within your business. So do this in phases. Look at the first thing. Make an assessment of uh, what is it that you sell? Can you sell online? Then the second phase is look at your website. Does it need to be modified? Does it need to be changed? Do you need to add certain elements to it? Then you come in and you keep building, which is the best platform. You don't want to come in and do all of this at one time because people right now want that instant gratification. It doesn't exist. You have to build this in phases. How many years have you been in business, Sasha? Uh, let's see. I'm going to date myself. So probably like 20 plus, 20 plus years. And, and keep in mind that when you started, were you up here? You know? Uh, no, I mean, our, the business, because as you know, I, we've had a business, we sold it, then we built another one, which is the brand advocate. So I'm like, sort of like Karen, serial entrepreneur, <laughs> yep, putting exactly. companies That's together and trying roll. to I sell think them. I started my first business in 2001, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. All I think us. that's when I was doing my MBA and I started my first business then. So all of us, so all of us, you know what, with what we're sharing with you is that, you know, to Tasha's point, being in business, it was a gradual growth. Karen's point, it's a gradual growth. It's not something that's going to happen overnight because you know what it is? It's like you start walking one day and you automatically lose 15 pounds. There's nothing that happens that quickly overnight. There is a video that you put on that can go viral, that can actually spread like wildfire, but you have to have an online presence and use both of those efforts in order to um, move forward and so forth. Um, and, and actually, uh, I actually want to go to the next slide. And if you have anything, Karen and, and, and Tasha, that you want to share, definitely. But um, I want to be mindful of people's times right now because it's it's actually uh, two o'clock. This is being recorded. Um, the SBDC um, will actually, Brianna will be sending this out. If you have not registered or applied for uh, the no cost consulting with the SBDC, I would encourage you to take advantage of this. You don't have to navigate this by yourself. Um, you've got Brianna's email, definitely ask her for the application. Uh, the overall goal of what we want you to do as business owners is to understand you don't have to navigate this by yourselves. Tasha's a business owner, Karen's a business owner, I'm a business owner, and we definitely want to come in and assist and help you. Um, and uh, I actually wanted to address, uh, um, Adriana's um, question of, uh, you know what, they're actually looking to create an online clothing boutique, you know, working. Um, and I know that we've talked a couple of things, Adriana, what's the best platform to use and so forth. Um, looking at there, do the research. Don't feel like you're isolated, but take advantage of everything that's there uh, because there are a lot of good things and people can sell. There's people that are making a really good living, you know, competing against Amazon. All right, so um, what do you need to be? You need to be online. If you look at the image that's there, oh my goodness, it's a computer and money is coming out of the, look at all those Benjamins. It's like, you know what? You can go ahead and, and um, it's all about the Benjamins. But if you want to excel, definitely don't wait. You can't sit idle. Uh, you have to launch quickly and imperfectly. Perfection doesn't exist. A lot of you are sitting down waiting for perfection and it's never going to show up because it doesn't, you know, through trial and error. But the overall goal is making sure that you take advantage of the resources and what's out there. 
um, update frequently. Um, make sure that your website has the content information um, and see what works and doesn't work. Um, so with that being said, um, I'm actually going to give this uh, Karen um, to uh, share some, some thoughts and some information. Like I said, wanna be mindful of everyone's time. So I know that a couple of people said they had to drop off, but this is being recorded. Yeah, just to sum up absolutely everything that's on here. One of the things I wanna emphasize from this slide is that I see all the time business owners that tell me, oh, well, I just, I didn't know how to do it. I'm sorry, you didn't know how to, there's Google, like Google it, type in how to and whatever it is you're trying to do. And I promise you, somebody has an article, a YouTube video showing you step by step. Don't tell me, I don't know how to set up a Shopify. I don't know how to create an Upwork account. I don't know how to sell on eBay. I don't, don't, that, that cannot be your reason. Cause if that's the reason go get a job, it means you're not motivated. You don't really want to do this. Like, even if you don't have a computer, you can Google how to on your phone. So please don't let there be barriers to starting. Just do it. Just do it and do it crappy and then improve it. But just do it. Try something. Where I'm from, we say, try a thing, no? Try a thing. Yes, so uh, that's my advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tasha. Yes, I was going to say the same thing. So, um, you know, I, I, we, one thing that we always tell our clients is, you know, don't focus on putting something out perfectly the first time around. That's why we have beta. So I'm sure you guys have heard things in beta status or development status. Go ahead and do it. Launch it. It's not going to be perfect. But once you have it up, that's like practically 80% of the battle. Now the next 20% is going to be tweaking it. Now you have a website up, let's tweak it. Let's, you know, SEO the content, do all of these things, but don't sit there and think, okay, well, I'm not going to do anything because it's got to be perfect the first time around. Yeah. And thank you. And I actually have our emails there. So if you have any questions, follow up, please take advantage of. Um, the one thing that we don't want you to do is don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate this. There are so many resources out there that you would be amazed where a lot of people are not doing, they're not taking advantage of having an online presence. Everyone is an online entrepreneur. Everyone has an opportunity to sell. A lot of people would come into your say, let's say your brick and mortar by way of buying. The funny thing is, is I did a presentation uh, last year in um, North Miami and I kept talking about the, the value of bricks and clicks and how they were gonna be morphing together. Little did I know that look at what we're living right now um, during this uh, pandemic and our minds have actually shifted and changed. Our customers' minds have shifted and changed. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Tasha. I definitely reach out to, to Karen, uh, to myself. Um, I know that Brianna actually added the link um, in the, um, the chat, uh, take advantage of the resources that the SBDC has. Listen, I want to thank Brian. I definitely want to thank Brianna. Bri Brianna makes all of this happen in the background and it's like texting and, and emailing. Did you get this? You have this. And my thing is, is that whenever I do anything with Brianna, uh, and the SBDC, none of us have to worry. We don't stress over it because she's got it down packed. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Tasha. And I'm going to turn it over to Brian. Uh, for some parting words. Yeah, I, what else can I say? You guys have covered really good information in about an hour. Um, and at the end of the day, um, every time I see you, Orlando, I know it's gonna be a very well run webinar. I think I know it's gonna have great panelists. Every time I see Tasha and Karen, I'm like, all right, even more, even more at ease because they always have really good information and real practical information from a business perspective, not like academic, not like I read this, in a Forbes book, or I read this, read this in an online thing. This is actually what happened to my business, and this is how I've been able to be successful. So I just wanna thank you guys for the great content and information. Um, it really was a lot of questions and answers um, from the participants. And um, like Orlando said, if SBDC can help you in any way, we're here to help you guys out. Um, if you're in Miami-Dade County, if you're in Monroe County, um, I want to thank you guys for that. We are recording this, so we will post it up to our YouTube and on social media. Um, as you guys said about content, this is content for us. <laughs> so we can post it up and um, have it on social media so folks can see it. And um, just want to again thank Miami Foundation, um, JP Morgan Chase Foundation, and also our partners at Prospera. 
um, in basically for this great building prosperity initiative. It's really been able to help us to help more businesses in the community. Yeah, thank you, Brian. It's funny, someone the other day said to me, it's like, Orlando, I saw you the other the other day and I'm looking around my house and I'm like, where? I'm like, uh, cameras? They're like, no, I saw a YouTube, you know, a video from the SBDC that you were talking about government contracting. Um, and I'm like, oh, I said, that's the one that I did with Tasha, with Moises, Jonelle, uh, and Karen. And they're like, yes. I'm like, oh, okay, so... Um, a lot of what we're doing, you know, to Brian's point, we're business owners. We're not teaching you theory. We're teaching you reality. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, listen, Brian, someone's actually asking for the YouTube uh, link. Uh, if you have that, if you can share yeah. it in the chat. I, um, can if, have, I can have Brianna send it afterwards just so everybody has okay, it. Because yeah. she's listening follow-up information. Right. Br Brianna will send it out in the... Um, and, oh, actually, Brianna just uh, actually commented on that. So, listen, thank you, everybody. Greatly appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, Tasha and Karen, I will see both of you later. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. Right, take everybody. care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>